Welcome back to Monday Night Talk. Don't just listen, say something. Call 781-837-4900. We now return to Kevin Tachi and Monday Night Talk. And we are back on Monday Night Talk, but I'm not Kevin Tachi. I'm Christine James, and we have hijacked the show again for another political forum. It's primary season. I'm Christine James, your moderator. Kevin Tachi, the host of Monday Night Talk, is joining us to ask questions along with our own Charles Mathewson here. And, of course, this is all being videotaped by Whitman Hanson Community Access, so we appreciate that. Tonight... We've got back-to-back for forums. First up, the Republicans vying for the ballot in the 4th Plymouth District. Ed O'Connell and Craig Valdez, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you. They're here live in studio. Now, the 4th Plymouth District is all of Marshfield and all of Situate except for one precinct. Immediately following, Republican candidates running for the state, Attorney General Dan Shores and James J. McMahon. We'll let the voters know where they stand on the issues. We also have our own Amy Leonard timing everything. She's the lady with the colored cards over there. Green, red, yellow. Green is go. It's nice. Works well with that camera. Red is stop. But when you see yellow, that means you have 10 seconds. Now, if you're still talking when she puts the red card up, I'm pretty good about giving you maybe five seconds leeway. And if you're still talking, got it. The bell. (laughs) Okay, because I know everybody likes to talk, especially when they're running for office. So our format is simple. We tell everybody we have asked for the candidates to have prepared opening and closing statements ready. Openings are two minutes. Closings are one minute, no longer. And reporters will ask questions with the answers under one minute, please. Then we'll do our lightning round where the answers are either yes or no, or one or two sentences tops. If we have time, we may let the candidates ask each other a question, but we're on a tight schedule tonight. Now, we did choose the opening and closing order out of the official WATD newsroom koozie just moments ago with Craig Valdez going first, then Ed O'Connell, and we will switch that reverse, uh, that order, when we get to the end of the forum. So let's begin now. Say good evening to Craig Valdez, your opening statement. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for coming to this very, very important event and let us be in, into your lives at this point. We have a very important decision uh, to make in this election. We have many challenges to overcome in order to take care of our residents and to move our towns forward. I know that the best qualified candidate will be the one uh, that will move uh, to be dedicated in the social issues as well as families and community. I'm a parent, homeowner, auxiliary member of the Marshfield DAV, as well as a member of the Situate Chamber of Commerce. I'm a licensed real estate broker and owner of the nonprofit 501C, which is responsible in distributing hundreds of boxes of foods to food pantries, senior centers, community kitchens, and homeless shelters. I believe I understand the layers of issues that concern the residents and how to meet their needs. I'm a proven I have proven the ability to work on any problem, small or large, until it's resolved. I will work hard to do proper research, which yields real information, and to solve any concern. After all, as your next representative, I will not only be your eyes and ears on Beacon Hill, but I will be a great advocate as well. I will work relentlessly to earn your trust and to get the job done. I'm your only choice in getting great things resolved. And based on my proven daily track record of directly helping residents, not only my pocketbook or special interest. This is your chance to have a homeowner, businessman, and a community service advocate working for you, not just another politician. Please make your vote count so we can build a better tomorrow together. Thank you very much. That was the opening statement with Craig Valdez. Now let's go to Ed O'Connell, your opening statement. Thank you, Christine and uh, WATD for having us. Uh, My name is Ed O'Connell. I'm running for the 4th Plymouth District. I'm married. I lived in uh, Marshville the past 25 years. I have two daughters, Amanda and Lindsay. Uh, Both went through the Marshville public school system and both graduated from one from Syracuse, one from George Washington University. So it's a testament to our public school quality education. Uh, Myself, I went to Wentworth Institute, also graduated with an MBA in finance from Suffolk University. For the past 30 years, I've had private and public sector experience, uh, working for Raytheon and GE in the high tech industry, and then for the past 25 years, in the for the Commonwealth of Mass with the State Lottery Commission, where I've held uh, positions in accounting, finance, and sales. Uh, I'm running to be your representative because I have a passion for public service. 
Uh, once I heard Representative Cantwell was stepping down, it was an opportunity for me to serve the people of Situate and Marshfield. I've been involved in the community. I've been uh, involved with volunteer school boards in the elementary, middle school, and high school level. Also with the Ventress Library, youth sports, uh, youth soccer. I've been a coach. Uh, we've played a lot of games, didn't win a lot, but we had a lot of fun. I've also been elected uh, Plymouth County Charter Review Commissioner. And for the past eight years, I've been a reserve deputy sheriff. So I believe uh, as a Republican, I'll be able to work closely with Governor Baker, and Lieutenant Governor Polito on day one, uh, listen to the concerns of the uh, Marshfield and Situate residents, work on our pressing issues of seawalls, opioid crisis, quality water, of course, maintaining funding for schools <coughs> and services for elderly and senior citizens. Uh, so I respectfully ask for your vote on September 4th. And uh, thank you very much. And again, that's uh, Ed O'Connell with his opening statement here for the forum for the 4th Plymouth District, the two Republicans that are looking for your vote on primary night. Let's start our questions now, and let's begin with Monday Night Talk host <coughs> Kevin Tachi. Thank you, Christine. Let's start with one of the two towns you hope to serve, Situate, which is part of the district, is having issues with its water system, reported here in 95.9 WATD. What do you feel it's your duty to do, if elected, to help this community uh, be able to remediate the situation? Let me start with Craig. The uh, brown water, as I've seen many signs of and indications for, is a very serious problem. In fact, it's a health problem. The first thing I would want to do is to find out what has been done to alleviate and mitigate the problems um, that's been current uh, in this administration itself. Then I would like to also be able to contact the Board of Health, the DPW, and a few other commissions to see exactly where they stand on fixing the problem itself and what they have done in order to get the problem resolved. The next thing I would do is be able to see what we can do to help the residents in the meantime to be able to not sustain this brown water or unhealthy water because we're talking about working with um, senior, senior citizens, children, and mothers that have to subject their families to this health hazard. And you do this all as a state representative? You sound more like a selectman than a state representative. Uh, I would be as a, definitely a state representative. Okay. All right. Means. Same question, Ed. Well, uh, you know, I, I attended the meeting and I saw the urgency in the, uh, in the people's faces at the situate meeting. I heard the stories of the, you know, the, the personal challenges. So. As a state rep, I would just try to uh, work with all the stakeholders, work with the uh, selectmen, the local town officials, and the state officials and the Baker administration to sound an alarm and, uh, you know, get some help down there. Let them know the urgency of this situation that, uh, again, this is one of the reasons I moved to the South Shore with my wife almost 25 years ago because of the pristine environment, because of the great, um, you know, the beaches and the uh, quality of life down here. So. Um, that's a big issue, and I see it in the, you know, in the folks of Situate, and it's something that I would definitely focus on and work with my colleagues in the legislature to make sure they know what a uh, serious situation it is. Okay, thank you. Charles Matthewson, question for the candidates. These are two coastal communities, Situate <laughs> and Marshfield. They've each had their challenges and winter storms in particular. Uh, some people have had the houses replaced more than once. Do you think there is a line at which you would have to say no more replacement, we're going to start to retreat and abandon some of these houses? Craig? Oh, that's a very interesting uh, question because as a real estate broker, it's going to be all about property value. And you have to realize that some of these people have owned these properties for a long, long time. They've had increased in value at a certain point, and they're at the point of view of, because of the winter storms, possibly lose their whole investment completely. completely. Uh, that means that they have a right to make a decision whether or not they're going to have future value to their homes or not. So what, we w what I would like to do is be able to see how we could get some type of funding or bonds or some type of assistance so that we could raise the properties. Because I had did some research where if we raise the properties to the FEMA level of 15 to 18 feet, we'd be better off than where we're at now. <laughs> because a lot of the homes, a lot of the original homes are actually at a very low rate, approximately five feet from sea level. 
So I would like to investigate that point. Ed, what do you have to say about flooding? Right. Well, again, I think it's a we got to take a proactive approach and, and look at all the alternatives being proposed by like, the Mass, Massachusetts Coastal Coalition and uh, look at alternatives for those coastal homeowners because, of course, they want to keep their property and uh, it's good for our revenue, tax revenue at the for the town. However, um, consistent repetitive insurance claims aren't helpful as well. So I think, you know, raising the homes, uh, looking at alternative protective measures out on the on the sea portion as far as barriers go uh, working as we are making progress on our higher sea walls to make sure we have better protection for our coastal property i think you know all those issues are something that we can work on as as your representative and i work with the municipal and the state leaders Okay. Well, Kevin Tachi, you like to quote me saying I love to use that term about bring home the bacon. So I'm going to ask that question now, and you guys probably knew I was going to do it. Jim Cantwell served this district for almost 10 years. He 50% of the job at least is constituent services, and this is a rep that really brought home the bacon, and he seemed to be everywhere. We used to make jokes that he had seemed to have four or five clones. He was probably out every night during the week. I know that we directed uh, constituents to him to resolve problems, and most of the time we got some pretty good feedback. How are you prepared to take on the role like that, and are you going to spend that much time at a job like this and bring home the results that Jim Cantwell did? Ed? Uh, yes, I agree. I think uh the consensus is Jim did a very good job with constituent services, and I've known Jim, you know, since I've been I moved to Marshfield. So, I agree. Um, as your representative, I believe that I'll do the same, if not better, because um, I've worked in both towns situated in Marshfield as a reserve deputy in times of crisis and in fun times, uh, uh, working details at the fairs at situated heritage days. I've, I've met the people. I know what it entails to be a representative. I know it's a lot of nights and a lot of weekends. Basically, you're on call. And people like to see the representative out there meeting with them and seeing firsthand what the issues are. So I would do the same, and uh, if not more, because I feel over the years I've supported the Republican candidates, the governor, lieutenant governor, and as an elected Republican representative, I'll be able to have a voice on Beacon Hill, let them know that situate in Marshfield have issues that we have to attend to and uh, hopefully I'll bring home the much needed funds. Okay, same question <clears throat> for you Craig, you're willing to put in that kind of time and be everywhere like Jim Cantwell was to be able to bring home the bacon to the district as pe that's what people are looking for, 50 percent of this job constituent services. Absolutely. One thing I found out when I was uh, running for state rep and getting my signatures, the first thing that people told me is oh is Jim Cat were leaving, and they were disappointed because they thought that he was still in the office. Uh, when he found out that he wasn't, um, they realized that um, there's going to be a void. So I, we as candidates are trying to assure the uh, candidacy, or I should say the uh, voters, that there is actually not going to be a void. So what I would do basically is be very much involved, both by my cell phone number, web page, um, Facebook page, and every type of print or other media so that I would be able to be reached. Second of all, I would like to have, instead of town meetings, which we have on a monthly basis per town, I would have um, section meetings because we have six districts, actually five that we represent. I would have meetings for each one of them. So that's to me is important. Okay. Kevin Tachi, questions for the candidates? Thank you. Let me ask you this. One of the biggest issues here in the Commonwealth, probably around the country as well, is the opioid epidemic. What needs to be done by the state's elected leaders uh, to not only increase education, but treatment on this matter, continue the success that the, this administration has been seeing? Ed? Well, I, I think, uh, fortunately, Massachusetts has been ahead of the, the game on this. Um, the governor and lieutenant governor have uh, been proactive on this. They've been involved in the opioid crisis since, you know, it's really come to the forefront here in Plymouth County and in uh, you know Marshfield and Situ we have groups that are working relentlessly and have a lot of great programs just on drug abuse and drug prevention and um, issues like that also in Plymouth County we have project outreach and the district attorney Tim Cruz from Marshfield and the the sheriff 
of uh, Plymouth County, also on a drug abuse task force for Plymouth County. So I think we have we are doing a lot in that area, but there's always a lot more that we can do. So I would just partner with the groups uh, that are here in Marshfield and in uh, Situate and make sure they're getting the funding they, that they need. And on the law enforcement end, making sure the bad guys are being, you know, sentenced to appropriate sentences and so that we don't have this this ongoing problem. Okay, same, same question. question. Okay, um, Jim Cantwell has done some excellent work in this regard, and I want to applaud him regarding that. I read uh, not too recently where Mr. Cantwell worked with another uh, state representative, Denise Garlick, in the Norfolk um, District. And what she and he had done was basically put together a certain program where the people who are incarcerated due to opioid uh, uh, offenses, basically, would actually be able to have treatment before they're leaving their jail. So when they go on the streets, they would actually be able to have uh, you know, proper treatment. The problem with we ha that we have right now is that the state would not allow us to medicate or give treatment for the people who are incarcerated do drug abuse and that's a shame though because when they come out of jail itself to rehab their tolerance is going to be so low so when they do go back and have um, if they take drugs or what have you they will automatically overdose I think we should also uh, have a lot of programs for treatment that will help the community remember too if you don't if you feel like you don't get enough time to answer your questions yeah. while we're talking you can always use some of your final statement to clarify something and for folks just tuning in it's a WATD political forum it's the fourth Plymouth district the two Republicans here running and that's Ed O'Connell and Craig Valdez follow-up question Kevin Todd yeah quick follow-up question in regards to education <clears throat> How young should we educate our children, wh wh whether you want to give an, uh, an age number or a grade, if you will, at uh, fifth grade? Okay. Correct. I would say similar. And if I could just touch upon this one um, just quick. answer. Okay, real quick question. Is education is very important and has to continue from fifth grade all the way up the line. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Charles Matthewson, questions for the candidates. Ed, you've had experience in both private and public sectors I have also and I think it's interesting to look at the difference between the way private companies work and the government works uh, we hear Republicans in particular very frequently say government needs to operate like a business could you compare and contrast the private sector and the public sector Right. What I think uh, Republicans try to say, mean by that uh, tone is that businesses are, are more efficient. They work towards the bottom line and they control spending and they're more fiscally responsible. So when Republicans say they want to treat it more like a business, I think they're talking about, you know, the state budget and programs to be run more efficiently, to watch out for the dollar, to be more fiscally prudent. And I think uh, that's how Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor uh, Polito approach state government. I think they've done a great job applying those um, principles to public agencies like the T, for instance. And the T has gone from, you know, being uh, debt ridden and uh, uh, not on time to being on time to being a lot, um, being more improved and saving a lot of money. So I think if we take that approach to state government in general, uh, the taxpayers will be better off. Okay, a follow-up on that. The one big difference between public and private is unions. Public employee unions have a lot of power in state agencies, state government in particular. How do you deal with that? Well, um, I belong to two unions, as a matter of fact, uh, SEIU and the uh, sag after union uh, for some of my little background work I've done in movies. But uh, so... I'm pro-union, however, and I also believe in collective bargaining, you know, and strong bargaining from the management's point of view and from the union workers' point of view. So I think there is a place for that, and I, you know, I'm all for uh, a good, robust uh, com competition as far as negotiation to go and working with unions. Craig, you lack the same kind of government experience. Do you see that as a deficit or... Do you consider it a, a lack of a taint? Uh, I think a little bit of 
uh, definitely a lack of attain. It's definitely not a deficit to me at all because as a business person, I treat I treat government as a business. And to begin with, I think that business should be run very tight financially or fiscally, number one. Two, there should be oversight and just like a business. But I also believe that with my fresh business experience, I would take that into the government and be able to have more of a, a public point of view as opposed to a political point of view. Okay, very good. Any follow up on that? Okay. All right. What about veterans and senior citizens? If you're elected to this office, what are you going to do to help our veterans and our senior citizens? Craig Valdez? Well, the, one of the things that I've experienced with my dad uh, was, um, he's my, first of all, my dad is a World War II vet. And when I took him to his medical appointments, the first thing that the doctors as well as the administration had said is, we do not have enough funds and we don't have enough personnel to help your father. And he's a World War II vet. I thought to myself, how many other thousands of people cannot get the services that my dad can? And there's countless more. The things haven't changed since 2010, I can assure you. What I would do is I would definitely lobby to make sure that they have better care, better um, services, they don't have to wait in long lines, better transportation so they'd be able to go to their doctor's appointments. But most importantly is to have low cost prescription coverage because that's very important. And in regards to the piece regarding aging, we do have an aging population that is increasing by the year um, 2030, which will be 35% of our city itself. We have to address it with freezing a lot of their finances, such as their um, tax bills and any other bills that would keep their dollar from stretching. Okay, okay. thank you. Let's go to uh, so what same question. Ed O'Connell, veterans and senior citizens, how are you going to help them out? Well, uh, of course, uh, they deserve the very best of uh, care and services that we can provide. I think we do a good job in this state of uh, providing, you know, funds for our seniors and our uh, senior sen uh, seniors and our veterans. Um, I believe one of the things we have to do is let them know what, what services are available and help them through the system, help them, you know, to apply for... Uh, services that are available as veterans also help them through the process as as your representative i would be more than uh available to help you know on a one-on-one -on -one basis a lot of great guys here in marshfield a lot of great veterans i've met in situate and they say the same thing it's more about just making sure our, um, our services are provided and maintained so as far as the elderly go and health care I was a caretaker to my mom who recently passed, but I, I saw firsthand the, you know, the high cost of, uh, of the medication and just the, the care that it took to take care of her. So I would help reduce uh, costs for that and also Thank you. try a to quick, help out. Quick follow-up question <laughs> for both of you, 30 seconds. If you're okay. elected to this position, would this be your only job? Ed O'Connell, 30 seconds. Yes, I would. Okay. I would, uh, yes. Okay, same question. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Just wanted to find out. Thank you. Let's go to Kevin Tanchi now. If you are elected to office, what type of types of legislation would you author and champion? Now, I'm not talking about supporting someone else's bill or legislation, but lead the way with your own. Craig. That would be definitely um, <clears throat> uh, transportation for the elderly. Right now, in this, uh, situate in Marsfield, there's a very big crisis in terms of having the elderly be able to get to their appointments. In fact, it's a uh, deplorable. What I would make sure that happens is that I would be able to uh, make, uh, make them able to get to their appointments, find ways in which they will have um, their appointments made um, through different right services. A good example is that I took a problem, which is a food um, instability, and I solved that problem. I guarantee I will be solving that as my next champion problem. Same question. I would uh, champion seawall-specific projects and the water quality issue in situate. Uh, meeting with both groups, I've seen how urgent uh, both those issues are, and I would just raise the alarm on Beacon Hill that uh, situate and Marshfield need, need help and need it now, not years from now. Okay. Questions? Charles Matthewson for the candidates. <laughs> what kind of Republican are you? Are you a Trumpian or a Bakerite? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, truthfully, I, I believe in uh, 
the Charlie Baker and Karen Polito approach to government is one that uh, attracts me, truthfully. I, I feel that uh, Governor, Governor Baker has done a fantastic job in his uh, four years in office, deserves re-election. I supported him in 2010 when he ran, again in 2014. Uh, Marshfield and Sitchwood both uh, supported uh, Governor Baker, uh, and he's done an uh, excellent job. I think he's, you know, his model of governing, uh, you know, fiscal uh, conservative, socially moderate, is just is working well. The, the state is doing well. Uh, economy is, is moving in, in jobs. We're creating new jobs. So as your representative, I will work closely with the Baker administration and my colleagues in the legislature. What kind of Republican are you, Craig? Um, if I had to choose between uh, Governor Baker and uh, President Trump, mm -hmm. I would say neither. And the reason why I say this is because I don't want to be a clone of either of the two people. By doing so, then I'll be labeled immediately. And I would like to be able to rest on my own laurels itself. But if I were to take some good points from both of them, I definitely like the fact that Mr. Baker is a very moderate uh, Democrat. He's fiscally responsible, and he's, he's very much on... He's, he's did a he Republican. switch parties? I'm sorry? <laughs> he's yes. a, we, we understand what you mean. You meant to say he's a moderate Republican. Moderate Republican. Yes. I hope they said that. Okay, moderate mm -hmm. Republican. <laughs> when it comes to um, Mr. Trump, um, I like the fact that he doesn't feel like he's being bought by anyone. He doesn't feel like he owes um, special interest groups uh, any favors. Um, that's as far as I'll go on that, that regard. I want to congratulate both of you for not saying... I'm a Craig Valdez Republican. It's the first. It's the first, yeah. <laughs> it's the first. I've asked that question of others, and they always say I'm I was a, waiting for it, personally. Yeah, me too. So yeah. that I'm was... A, no, no, that was, that was refreshing. <laughs> Thank you. This district is, uh, even though they may have gone for Baker, this district is uh, highly filled with Democrats. How are you going to win the race for state rep, Craig Valdez? Well, first of all, I'm going to provide a very fresh, common sense, logical solutions. My candidacy is based upon getting the facts, not relying on other people's facts, and being able to find out the real causes for any social problem and working together with the people to fix the problems directly. So I don't want to rely on old information or probably defective information. I will definitely be going to Mr. Cantwell, for an example, to ask what he has done on these particular issues and what we could do to further his legislation. Okay, thank you, Craig Valdez. Yeah. Ed O'Connell, heavily Democratic district here. How are you going to win this seat? Well, it, there are more Democrats than Republicans. However, the main uh, party or uh, the main uh, voter block is the unenrolled or independents. So that's where the crux is. But however, to I'll attract the Democrats because myself, I have roots. Uh, when I grew up in the city, the you know the family was Democratic, but uh, we turned with the Reagan Revolution, and uh, I think that you know I consider myself a blue collar Republican. I you know I know what it is to work hard. I've worked several jobs all my life. Uh, I know how it is to, you know, work several jobs to make ends meet, and I know the concerns of the of the Democratic family. So uh, I'm not running as a strict Republican. I'm running for representative, and that means to represent all people, Democrats, unenrolled, and Republicans. Uh, and I'll do that as your representative. Thank you very much. Now let's go to back to Kevin Tonchi. Question for the candidates: Education is uh, is key to local taxpayers. Uh. However, many communities are struggling to gen generate enough revenue or state aid these days. So what needs to be, be done to better fund education in the Commonwealth and especially for your district? Well, I think one of the uh, <clears throat> things that has to be done is, which has been discussed, is tweaking the Chapter 70 funding formula. And that's, that's one thing that I, I would work on that I agree on as, a, uh, as your representative. Also, I... I for the past 25 years, I've worked at the State Lottery Commission, which is a $5 billion agency, which in a small way uh, contributes to the uh, municipal towns, Marshfield and Situate, each getting almost $2 million in unrestri unrestricted uh, local aid. So although that doesn't go straight to the educational budget, um, that may free up some other funds to increase uh, school funding. So I'm all for education. Uh, I have my master's of taught as an adjunct professor and I believe education is 
critical to a successful future. And, and again, that's one of the reasons that I moved here to Marshville for its quality education system. And I want to improve both of them and maintain the level of excellence. Okay, thank you. That was Ed O'Connell. Same question, Same question. Craig Bell does. Yes, education is very crucial uh, to our talents, not only in terms of the value of our talents itself, but also for the future of our um, children as they become adults as well as career people. I would definitely look at the budget itself and see where we stand in terms of what we have um, for education. Most importantly, I would see where we could direct more funds to educational needs itself, of all levels of high school, elementary school, junior high itself. Okay, let's move on to Charles Matthews and questions for the candidates. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to say it. These, you two would be, if elected, uh, a freshman. Uh, legislator, what committee assignments would you most prefer, Ed? Public safety. Why? Because uh, as a uh, deputy sheriff, again, I've, I've seen law enforcement, how they work. I've seen Marshfield at its finest. I've seen Situate uh, during the, the weather crisis. And I think they do a great job. Uh, you know, they're, they're proactive. They're visible in the community. Both chiefs of each town are very uh, well-trained, and their entire force is well-trained. And they're very involved in the community. So I think being part of the public safety committee would just enhance our stature and situate in Marshfield. Craig, which committee assignments would you prefer? I would definitely be the senior center and senior citizens, rather. Um, the reason why I say senior center is because I really think we're overdue in having one for our seniors. As I was beginning to mention the last piece, the uh, population of our seniors as we speak is 15% of our population is seniors. In 2030, it's going to be 35%, and it's only going to get more. So the seniors have very small budgets that are unfortunately being cost of a town. We have to make sure we want to take care of the people who've lived here for all their lives, who brought up our town, brought up our history, and will also forge our future itself. <coughs> and we could have the younger population coexist with our seniors, but the seniors have to stay, have to be taken care of, and that's my champion goal. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sure. You folks um, both seem like you're pretty uh, copacetic on but on the issues what are the differences between you two as candidates Greg well um, the differences between me and perhaps other candidates itself is that instead of being a politician I spend most of my life doing community service work so I'm out in the streets out in the trenches working and providing a better life for our community as best as I can so th for me uh, that's very crucial and that's a crucial difference that makes sets me apart between all the rest of the candidates. Okay, what about you, Ed? What's the difference between you and, and Craig Valdez? And Dan, you don't have to pat the table here. <laughs> I, we, call, we call that the DA no, thing. No, no I, I applaud his, uh, <laughs> Craig's uh, community <laughs> service work. And, uh, you know, I'm all for it. I mean, I, I support uh, our local food pantries in Marshfield and Situate. I think they do a great job. Uh, however, as a candidate, I bring with myself over 25 years of grassroots uh, Republican support for all candidates. I've worked on campaigns. I've been in the trenches. I've supported other candidates running for office. So I'm, I'm very engaged with the process, and I've worked on behalf of countless you know, winning officials. I know the officials. I know our elected uh, officials currently and i'll be able to work with them on day one when i get elected okay thank you uh kevin tachi question for the candidates one thing we haven't touched upon is transportation talk about our transportation infrastructure what do you feel needs to be done when it comes to being able to have enough money to repair roads bridges you really need to lead that that discussion up to the state house craig Yes, um, it's pretty evident that uh, there are some uh, issues with our roads. Uh, I know that because I live on Woodworth Lane, and uh, there's some potholes on, our, uh, on my road itself. But there's a lot more on Common Ave and so many other places itself. Uh, but there's also more important to all that is the brown water issue that we spoke about earlier. There is definitely a lot of aging infrastructure, including historical structures such as the lighthouse itself, which is quote-unquote crumbling as we speak. 
So what I would do is I'd uh, work with um, the people who are already there, definitely speak with Mr. Campbell to see where we stand in terms of how much money we have in the budget to be able to work in fixing our roads. I'd also work with the DPW, the highway um, department, to find out exactly where do we stand in terms of or timeline that is being worked on as we speak because some of the stuff are in the process. I just want to be able to speed the process up and to find out that we have or do not have enough money into champion that part. Same question. Yeah. And I, I would just take the lead on uh, some of the ongoing state funding projects already. They, they have an accelerated bridge improvement program where you see uh, bridge improvements being done on the weekends on a 24-hour basis so it doesn't impact the traffic. I'd like to see that same urgency on some of our projects here locally in Marshfield and Situate that, you know, that need attention. Uh, but that being said, I would, you know, follow again the governor and uh, look to bring some more necessary funding to our projects here in Marshfield and Situate, the, the roads, uh, the seawalls, and make sure we have enough Chapter 90 funding uh, to do all that infrastructure improvements that we need. Okay. Charles Mathewson, questions for the candidates? Uh, what have you learned uh, knocking on doors or making phone calls? What have the prospective voters told you? Craig Veldens. Uh, they've all told me that, uh, or they've all, they all told me that their taxes are too high and they want to know what I could do to be able to help them. They've told me when we're, they asked me when I, we're going to have a senior center. They've also asked me when is someone going to be fixing the roads? That where they live, most importantly. Ed? Okay. Right, same. Uh, you know, I've knocked on a lot of doors. I've made a bunch of phone calls, and we're, I, I, it runs the gamut from, you know, again, can you improve Route 3, make our commute quicker to Boston, uh, uh, just to fixing that pothole on my street. But for the most part, it's been, you know, mo uh, brown water. It's been um, too much development in downtown Situate. Uh, it's uh, been, of course, the seawalls and seawall repair for our coastal community. Mm -hmm. But overall, you know, what I found refreshing is also a lot of people, I say, what's your main issue? What are your concerns? As your rep, what could I bring to Beacon Hill? And they say, everything's fine. You know, everything's great. <laughs> that's why I live here and situate on Marshfield. And uh, that's refreshing because I think it is a great town and we work together. We have great officials, uh, local and state officials working on our behalf. And I want to be your representative to work on our behalf and, and continue to make it a great place to live and raise a family. Just a reminder, you're listening to 95.9 yeah. FM in Marshfield, WATD, the South Shore's news and information station. You're listening to a political forum. It's the 4th Plymouth District, the Republican candidates, Craig Valdez and Ed O'Connell running in the primary election. 4th District is all of Marshfield and all of Situate, except for one precinct, and we're asking them questions here tonight. Are you finished up, Charlie, or did you want another yeah. question? Okay. What's your what's your most passionate issue going into this race? If you can get one thing done in this office for in your first two year term, what would it be, Craig? Definitely um, transportation for the seniors. Okay. Okay. You, got a few, you, you, you can oh. talk. You can actually talk a little bit more if you'd like. Okay, fine. I, <laughs> I, I thought it was a like, wrong question. The, the okay. construction paper. Doesn't it make people nervous? That's why we do it. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> uh, transportation for the seniors, because I've heard over and over and over that the. the uh, senior citizens cannot get to their appointments. They got to the point where they just want to get to the doctor's appointments and they have to make a decision whether or not they're going to make it this week or not because they have nowhere, no one to take them to their appointments. It's a very, very big problem. My second um, point, which is tandem to that, is the food instability. I was able to start, or I should say solve a problem regarding food instability with the seniors, as well as all the community itself. I was excited that I was actually make big headways throughout the Cape, Plymouth County, and Norfolk County. I'm gonna be doing the same thing with the seniors and their transportation needs. Okay, what's your hot button is issue, Ed? What's your most passionate issue that you have for this district? I'd say the uh, seawalls. Living in the Green Harbor section of Marshfield, I see the devastation over the, uh, the winter months and the constant uh, need for improvement, and, and that is near and dear to everyone's heart in Marshfield. And Situate, since we're so, the image of our towns are so closely aligned with the sea and the, uh, the beautiful coastline. So that would be a main priority of mine. Okay. Kevin Tachi, questions for the candidates here? Yes, indeed. I think I want to follow up on the, tr on the 
question I asked you in regards to transportation. We know under the Deval Patrick administration, there was this fantastic transpa- transportation bill that had all kinds of tax incentives bundled in. Give me your thoughts on supporting any kind of transportation bill if there are incentives that are tied in. <clears throat> Start with you, Ed. Well, y- you know, having a great transportation system is key in, a, in, in our state. I mm-hmm. believe, uh, you know, the T, the quality of the T, the red line, the green bush line is uh, paramount. However, you know, when Governor Deval Patrick talked about all these grandi- grandiose plans, that's also cost a lot of money. Uh, so, Right, but I'm talking about it was, it was an $800 million transportation uh, bill that had the tech tax in it. I believe it had the, uh, the CPI on uh, the gas tax. There Correct. were a couple of different taxes that were within that that it seemed as though the House and the Senate voted for, and then all of a sudden we started pulling back the forces. We saw the tech tax go away because it was, a, it was, it was like, oh, no, I didn't support that. So I want to know where you stand. Are you going to be paying attention? Well, when a, when a bill, a bill, an enticing bill like this comes forth and you're voting on it, you're going to be looking into it and make sure that there's nothing in there that's going to harm the consumers Correct. of the Commonwealth. I, I think, again, the devil's in the details. And as your representative, I'll look at those uh, large spending bills for our transportation because they may, again, they may sound good to the, uh, the average voter. But, mm. again, people in Marshville and Situate are involved they're informed voters, and they want to know, hey, what's the, what's the bottom dollar for me? Is it going to cost me extra on my tax bill? Am I going to be, is it going to have a, a hidden tax added to this? So uh, that's a good point, and I would really look at the legislation closely before I was to vote yes. Same question, Craig. Yes. Uh, um, it seemed like light years away when uh, Deval Patrick was our governor, and I also want to keep in step with um, the law's that had been passed and uh, what uh, it affects our current population itself. There's been a lot of changes. It seems like the changes of guard also requires the changes of outlook on how we're going to resolve the problem. So I wouldn't take the Deval Patrick and Santos and his bill on face value itself. What I'd like to do is revisit it to see where we stand on it and what we can make good for the people that they, we promised them. Even if there was something enticing for your district in there, something promised like a, a pet project for you to vote on this bill. You're, you're saying that you, if there's something in it that's going to, you know, that's going to be long-term uh, issues like uh, like certain taxes that you'd say no to it. Is that what you're saying? Well, in regards to that itself, um, I don't, you know, in, a lot of bills will have all these, like you said, enticements. Bill um, bundling, yes. Pork bellies and mm-hmm. what have you, what have you. I don't like to really get involved with that. I want to be very straight as an arrow and see what we can do. Because once you get into the slippery slope of saying what I can do and, and give people incentives and do all these backroom deals, that becomes a problem. Okay. Charles Matthewson, quick question, then we're going to go to lightning round. Well, to segue to lightning round, in situate with the brown water... Um, would you study this a, li- a little bit? Would you prefer uh, to replace wells, put in filtration, or replace pipes? Okay, so let's do this as a lightning round question then. Okay. So that's two sentences tops. Let's start with you, Craig. Okay. Um, wells, it, filtration, okay. or pipes? Okay. Well, for one thing itself, I would definitely look to see where we're at in terms of finances. I look to see where we're at in terms of all the problems that we have. That's simple. Okay. Same question, Ed. Two it's sentences. A combination of all three. Yeah. I attended the meeting, and it's a lot of civil engineering that goes into it. Okay. Uh, Lighten your own question. I would be remiss if I didn't ask this. Here it this. comes. They know. Plymouth County government, stay or time to go? Ed O'Connell. Two Hi. sentences. Time to go. A lot of redundant services that can be uh, absorbed into the state. Okay. Craig Valdez. Exactly. Plymouth County so government, time to stay or go? Time to go. And the reason why is because I think we need a fresh outlook on things, and I really think that okay. there's a problem. Okay. Lightning round question. Kevin Taji. Would you ever support a statewide ban on plastic bags? This is a yes or no question. Craig. Uh, can you repeat that again? I'm sorry. Would you ever support a statewide ban on plastic bags? Absolutely. Yes. Ed. Okay. Charlie. What are your top three news sources, Ed? Uh, the Patriot Ledger, Boston 25 News, and uh, WHED. Greg? Again, can you repeat that again? Top three news sources. Uh, uh, definitely would be uh, Fox News. It would be um, CNN and MSNBC for balance. Okay. Any others? Because we're going to go to closing statements. Charlie? Any other? Yeah, any other lightning round question? Mr. Tachi? One word that best describes you. 
Ed. One, one Loyal. Word. Craig. Passionate. Okay. Charlie. Uh, what book or TV show or movie are you most looking forward to seeing? Okay, Craig. TV show would be Discovery. I love Discovery Channel. Okay, Ed. Uh, the new series on Hulu, which is a cable uh, show called Castle Rock, because I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, a member of SAG after <laughs> right here. Okay, wow. we're, let's go to a closing statements now, and we are going to flip the order. So we're going to begin this time with Ed O'Connell, then go to Craig Valdez, and remember to keep these to a minute, please. Ed, whenever you're ready. Hi, hello. Thank you again for having us tonight. Uh, my name is Ed O'Connell, and I'm running for 4th Plymouth District Representative for the town of Marshfield and Situate. On September 4th, I respectfully request your vote. I am experienced. I have 30 years in the private and public sector with uh, GE Raytheon and 25 years with the state of Massachusetts working in finance and sales. I will work day one with the Baker and Polito administration. I'll listen to your concerns and issues and I'll bring those concerns to Beacon Hill and I'll advocate on your behalf and I'll work hard to earn your vote and I appreciate your vote on September 4th. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. That was the closing statement of Ed O'Connell. Now we're going to go to the closing statement of Craig Valdez. I have a proven track record of solving very important social concerns without government assistance or without cost to taxpayers. This is the type of commitment that you would expect in your next state representative. I will um, prioritize four major social goals, one of which I've basically accomplished which is food stability, senior transportation, prescription coverages, and housing. I've already successfully made a giant impact in the food problem that plagues our towns, and I already have great plans for senior transportation. I will never, I'll, I will never lessen my efforts until our four issues are effectively and efficiently handled. I will also work on all issues, big and small, so that all residents will continue the confidence of our great towns of Marshfield and Situate. And a final note is that I will never um, marginalize Hummer Rock because it seems like they're always kind of in the back burner, but they won't on my watch. Thank you very much. That was the final statement from Craig Valdez. You've been listening to the two candidates that are running in the 4th Plymouth District Republican seat, and that is uh, Craig Valdez, Ed O'Connell. Primary night is on September 4th. WATD, of course, will have complete coverage and have reporters out in the field to bring in the results of all these races just as soon as they're in. We want to thank Kevin Tachi here, Monday Night Talk host, asking questions, our own Charles Matthewson, and, of course, Amy Leonard doing the timing here, and, of course, Whitman Hanson Community Access. This entire forum will be up online as well as the video sent out state statewide, and we will have cuts from this forum on the air tomorrow morning. Stay tuned. We're going to stop for a few commercial messages. Then we'll be back because we're going to be talking to the Republican candidates that are running for Massachusetts Attorney General. And Christine James, remember, if you don't vote, you don't have a voice. We'll be right back right after this.